Everybody needs a little candy in their life. And I am so happy to say that doll makers over the years have realized that their dolls and their toys could be receptacles for candy. Now, they didn't always make them. Sometimes they were commissioned by famous candy makers, for example, in Paris, would commission a doll maker to make a doll for them that would have a hidden secret. Inside the doll would be a hollow space designed for the, make, the placement of candy, and that would help them and make, give them a name as a luxury candy shop. And the first one we have is an absolutely remarkable doll. When you first look at it, it is a doll. It is the rare two-faced brew doll. We have the smiling face on this side, and then the hat flips over, the head turns, and we have a really petulant child with a squalling red face. So the doll itself, extraordinarily rare, with her little folded arms coming down under her dress. Uh, let's turn it back to the happy face. Because what would happen when the child received this doll, they would soon have a happy face because when they have the doll, they simply would look and at the bottom, they could separate, pull down, pull down, I'm pulling, I'm pulling, and this would have a lot of candy because there would be the hollow base and inside would be hidden the candy. So that's a lot of chocolates and that would be one happy child who would have the candy and then have the doll after the fact. Now there are lots of other examples made. Two of the favorite dolls of, of Berta Hackney and to show how what an eclectic taste she has were these dolls that she acquired from the famous auction of the Dina Verne uh, collection from Paris, France. And these are two originally costumed marquee dolls. We put them on our cover of our catalog. And look at their profile of their faces. Look at that hook, nose, and chin. Is that, that is unbelievable. So these were the marquee guys in Paris. And they're wearing their totally original costumes, which I want you to see from all sides. I think these are just wonderful. And then, Look, candy container torso. Imagine how these could have been preserved for a century and a half in this kind of wonderful condition. So you have them as fabulous presentation dolls, wearing fabulous original costumes, great faces, and oh, did you see the wig at the back, by the way? Look at that. I don't know if he, the camera was able to stop on it long enough. The braided periwig. Just wonderful. And originally, somebody got this full of chocolates. Wow, that was living. Now, these were the French Marquis, but in the meantime, they sent their Lafayette over to America to help us in our Revolutionary War. And here was George Washington coming in on his dappled horse. And he is also a candy container, not made in France, but made in Germany. And in a way, it was kind of weird because I just think, how would a child feel about, oh, the horse's head came off. But they probably were too busy looking at the candy that was hidden inside. This George Washington doll is so rare to find, and usually it's in a much smaller size. This is a very, very rare size from the Berta Hackney collection. And then, while we're sticking with animals, how about this? How about if you had a candy container in the shape of a pig and his head came off? Isn't that a great piece? I love that. There's so many things. Well, I'm going to be showing you more things from her collection that just make you happy. And we have the little Hoybach boy on a sled, and his head, his torso pulls apart, and inside, again, is that little candy container cardboard receptacle in the form of a little Hoybach boy sitting on a sled. And finally, this one, the little soldier boy, and he also comes apart, and his torso would be as a candy container. So many of them were sold in um, what I would call shops that would have catered to people making a grand tour of Europe, and they would say, oh, this is a wonderful gift, and I'll bring candy home to someone, and they'd bring candy, and they'd bring a doll as well. So if you know Berta Leone Hackney, you know she's a happy woman. And she liked to surround herself with dolls that were not only beautiful, but dolls that had joviality and, and freshness and things that made you smile. That's why she has her clown collection and why she has 
various novelty dolls, your doll smiling. And take a look at this fellow. I wanted to have him in this video so you could actually see how big this doll is. He is, well, he's pretty robust and he looks like he just had a jolly good meal, the way he's rubbing his belly. But so many rare things about this, as well as just making you happy to look at him, is his original finish, his glass eyes, and his grand, grand size of the popular Roly Dolly toy. Absolutely wonderful. Berta loves clowns. She always has, and she has some wonderful clowns in their original costumes. And I brought three of them out because I wanted you to see, you have a tendency when you think of clown dolls to think, oh, maybe they'll kind of all look alike. But it's not true because we have, first of all, clown dolls could have been made with very, very rare models. Witness this particular Simon and Halbig doll. They could have been made um, by the French. And look at the different paintings on the face of these dolls, the clown decorations done. I like to think that, that whoever was painting these were so used to painting the standard pretty bebés that when they had an idea that they could paint a clown face, they would do it magically. They would do it with something that would really suit their imagination and their pleasure and make them happy to look at. So here, two very rare clown dolls from the Berta Hackney collection of clown dolls. Berta has a collection of googly dolls and she has uh, virtually every one of the uh, rare helmet googlies that were made by Max Handwerk about 19 in the 19 teens. And this is one of the rarest of them because you think this is the fellow but no, it isn't. Here he is here. He's a double-faced. I think that is the Turkish hat, and or Turkish or Japanese, I'm not sure. And the all I can think of is, you know, I always try to understand what the motivation was behind the doll makers. Why would they have made this one a double face and the others were the single doll? And all I could think of is, well, maybe they didn't think they would have that big, it's Turkish, I see the symbol on the front now. Maybe they didn't think they would have as big a market, so well, let's try two for one. And this doll might appeal to two different buyers. So there we have the rare double face googly. Another model by Gebruder Heubach, which is a very, very rare one, not for the model so much, but because of the fabulous brown complexion. And Berta does have, again, as I talked to you before, this wonderful collection of black dolls and here's one of the rare examples from the Berta Hackney collection. When I look at black dolls and, descri and describe them for cataloging purposes, one of the things I always look at, because I know this matters to collectors, I like to say what, if it's something has a flawless complexion. That is, it doesn't have little chips or flakes on the paint, so the collection is, is not um, seamlessly uniform. And this one does have a wonderful flawless complexion that really enhances his wonderful expression. Here is a great guy. This one is full of laughs. You think this is a paper mache doll? No, it is not. Watch. I'm taking it off and this is a totally original doll. This is a little Gebruder Heubach fellow and he is going to a party and he has his hooded mask to wear to make him into a fellow that's not dissimilar to the marquee candy containers we looked at a minute ago with the big hooked nose and the jaw. I don't know why they always thought the marquees had to have a big hooked nose, but there it is. And this was his face that is designed to perfectly fit over the top of his head, and he would go to the party, the costume party, as the marquee. Fun dolls from her collection, so many fun dolls. This is a very, very rare example from the Gebruder Heubach collection, and you might wonder why, and what I want to point out to you that you're probably not realizing, this is not a hat on his head, a separate hat. This is sculpted into the bisque. It's a sculpted helmet, and it is the only one that I have ever seen. This was, um, Berta um, acquired this from the either, it was either the Pupin and Spielzeug Museum in Vienna or the Lego Museum, but from one of the famous European museums, uh, Berta acquired this, and this is the only one I have ever seen of this type, extremely rare. And I put her in always because I know if you're watching this, you have access to the internet. Go on the internet and look for Princess Angelina. She was very, very famous daughter of one of the last princes, uh, last Indian um, chiefs in the Seattle area, 
uh, her name was Princess Angelina, and it is believed that the, this Gebruder Heubach model was sculpted after her image, and if you find her photograph on the internet, you are going to agree with that. I, I don't understand why Heubach would have sculpted a Native American from Seattle, but it's without question, it is a portrait of her. So good opportunity for good research and trying to find out the backstory of why this would be a stunning work of art regardless. And let me just turn it so you can see her details of the sculpting. If I pull her wig back so you can see how beautifully she's absolutely done. Very gaunt, high cheekbones. And then finally, this is so, this is great to me. This is a design by Georgie Navril. He's called the Alley Dog. There was also an Alley Cat. Alley Dog, and I never knew this until we were doing the description for the book, that he not only assigned Alley Dog on his head, but his tongue assigned Alley Dog. So when his tongue comes out, it will have the little mark, Alley Dog, no, meaning that, that tongue belongs to him and nobody else. Just some of the fun dolls from Berta's collection. Now when you want to talk about fun, you can have the fun little dolls that I just showed you, but you can also have dolls that do things. They might be the sophisticated French wind-up uh, wind automatons that are musical and have motion that you could stand on the other side of the room and watch them perform, or they might be the German ones that you stand in front and do the hand wind and they will uh, perform music and perform your little tricks or even be little squeeze boxes. And Berta loved, has loved toys and mechanical, musical uh, gadgetry and wonderful pieces from our past. And she has an incredible collection of probably more than 50 hand wine toys and French automaton. And I just have a small sample here to show you. Oh, I don't know. I guess ones that just really appeal to me. This is always a favorite of mine. When you can find this piece, it is so very, very rare to find for several reasons. Number one, it was a luxury item. It was made in France by Leopold Lambert. And number two, he commissioned a special face for this doll from the Jumeau firm to have the little crying face. Uh, Jumeau later took this face and turned it act into an actual doll, not an automaton, and they are some of the rarest dolls in the world today. But here you have an opportunity to see it on this automaton, and here we go. Music plays. She has a little broken doll and she's weeping because her doll has broken and she's holding the head and the body has fallen to the floor. This one is particularly special because the little brother of the little doll is standing there looking at the broken pieces of the other doll. She lifts it up and down as though she's trying to save it, turns her head, dabs her cheeks where she's crying and the Expressive face really enhances the whole. Wonderful original costume and presentation. And then a wonderful little pull toy, not a hand wine, but simply a pull toy that the action would occur from pushing and pulling the piece across the floor. You think it's just a clown standing here and he's holding two little cones up to the top of his head. But hidden inside those cones is another doll. And as you push and pull across the floor, the little doll pops up, his hands move back and forth, and he kicks his feet. Simpler times, simpler toys, but can you imagine the delight? It must have given children, I, I still think it's delightful today. Totally original, type of thing that Berta just spent so much time looking for and searching for because these were simple toys and they tended to get destroyed. So even though they weren't the most expensive luxury toys at the time of making them, they are so rare today. You hardly ever find any, in, in the, particularly in the condition that Berta's are in, that, and have this delightful music. Here's a two-man band, I guess you'd call it. Well, oh, no, actually only one man is playing the cymbals. And the other little clown is sitting in the front, and I guess that is, it's a paper accordion. Now watch.
simple, mu simple movements, heads going back and forth, hands clapping, hands clapping here, foot tapping, and little music playing. And the whole time, you're winding it from the front. I don't know if I can do it from here. So you can see how wonderful that works. A great piece. Then, this is a great one as well. Um, I don't know if I can wind these. Okay, I guess this way. So here we have a three three part. We have the little jester child with the, beating the drum. We have the performing poodle, and then we have the other performing poodle who's balancing on the stand. And I'll see if I can do this. All right, first I'm doing it this way so you can hear the music. So you can see the pieces were designed for a child to be looking at it while they played it, which I can't do and show the camera at the same time. So I'm going to try to show you now, and I won't get the music going well. This little guy is actually making this go up and down, which is causing the bell to ring, which is causing this poodle's um, little balancing jump rope to go back and forth. Everything is connected to the rope right here. You can see how that is working. All right, and this little fellow has other wires coming out which are causing him to beat the drum in time. I think this is a very, very special one because there are so many movements going on here and they're all made to action by the hand wine at the front which also makes the music action. And the, we call this one the performing poodles, ringing the bell, jumping the rope, and beating the drum. This is an earlier piece which is very, very spectacular partly because of the wonderful detail. Again, this goes back to how we talked at the beginning of the program about the bisque dolls with sculpted hair because this little fellow comes from that time period, from the 1880 time period. And he has wonderful um, modeling of his hair and facial features. And he is sitting on this little base. And when he would be pulled back and forth, he would beat the cymbals, his head would turn, and the bells would ring in the front. Again, simpler toys, simpler times. This is all original with a wonderful original painting, an original costume. And I'm particularly taken with the fact that even the little drum he's beating has this beautiful original painting on it. His wonderful boots and the way he's sitting are all very, very special to the making of this doll. A this was certainly a luxury toy of its time. This one is rather harsh, but it has amusing action. I wanted you to hear how well the music works. So can you see what he's doing? He is winding the donkey's tail. The donkey is nodding his head up and down. The old man is turning his head from side to side. And the bell is ringing. And it all takes place by simple wires and threads that come down from the donkey and from the doll. And it's, it's just a wonderful and ingenious toy. I just think with all of the use of videos and video games that kids have today, could they be happy with these simpler toys? I think they should be. If they couldn't be, they should. I saved my favorite for last. I have never seen this, ever, ever, ever. And it's a simple automaton in one sense, but it is so rare and so complicated. Now, I want to tell you what it is. It's the photographer. And certain things are going to happen. Right now, the photographer is standing with a blank plate about to drop into the camera. Then the photographer taps her hand or like pulls the string as though snapping the photograph of this little child posed here and the actual photograph of that child arises from the camera. A truly remarkable piece. French, end of the century, watch. Tap. And here comes the photograph. There we have the blank plate again. Music is playing.
photographer snaps the photograph. The plate goes down. And the photograph of this actual doll emerges. And it continues over and over again. This is so fascinating because it was early days of photography, early box cameras, posing, um, an occupational automaton, so many different themes going on here, but I have not seen another. Winding is at the back. I could spend hours showing you wonderful dolls from the collection of Berta Leone Hackney and so many varieties, so many categories and genres. I'm just standing here with two others while I say goodbye to you to show you the type of things that are also available. Everything from peddler dolls to French dolls to mechanical to different categories of collecting. Um, one, a wonderful large uh, child's bed with an oil painting on it wonderful doll houses, which I haven't been able to show you because I can't bring them out here. There's a French chateau with an elevator and 15 stained glass windows. That is just ex absolutely extraordinary. So many incredible pieces, uh, doll house furniture, doll house people, um, wonderful accessories and furniture and everything imaginable. Over 500 objects. What did we look at today? Perhaps 35 or 40. Over 500 objects are shown in the book Only Child by Berta Hackney and I hope that you're able to come to the exhibition and see all of the dolls in person and if you can't do that perhaps you can have the book and look at that and savor it for years and years to come. Berta's a wonderful person and I'm so glad and proud to have been able to handle her legacy. Thank you very much.